Thanks. What was I going to say? Where's the... I had a little thing. Oh, I know. Sorry. Oh, here. If you don't want to... If you... That's that. Oh, okay. That's what yeah. this is. Okay. Do you want this, like, on camera, though? up at the end here if you want to grab some. Mm-hmm. Wait, where's your glass? I'm just saying, I mean. Well, yeah, that's a problem. You've got your glass. Over here. B-Wise, p No, no, no. That ain't true. We'll be drinking my all of this on camera. Yes. You'll be eating. Right? Yes, yes. I'll take oh. a three of these. Yeah. There's that. All right. Oh, this might have been it. <laughs> somebody's. I don't know who that is. Is this somebody's or? I think that's somebody. I think that was yours. Did the answer be yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Somebody>. <laughs>
Yep, yep. Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome to the Studio by Feast of Ford here in the lovely, beautiful Napa Valley. We have a live audience here for actually our first legitimate installment of Riffs and Recipes. And we are very excited to have the Mr. Martin Luther McCoy and Chef Tanya Holland. So thank you. He's going to lead us into song as we get ready to gear up where Riff meets Recipe. This ain't no illusion, babe. It's time to just who you and recipes is to, is to merge you know chef and musician and talk about food and life and family and friends and spirit of gathering and kind of the customary of how you guys grew up in the kitchen and what led to music what led to inspiring you to be a chef and um, with the backbone of that these live studio members that are in our audience today their ticket proceeds go directly back 100 percent to the charities of choice that have been chosen tonight which is uh, Take Flight Foundation and Chef Cycle Take with wings. Take Wings, mm -hmm. Take Wings Foundation, and then Chef Cycle with No Kid Hungry. And you know, it's important for us to give back through Feast It Forward because that is our sole intention to thrive and feast it forward and inspire, educate, and give. And so, thank you for all of you here and for all of you watching across the country. Um, click that donate button. Go on to feastitforward.com and donate now because every dollar counts, and we will be splitting that completely in half to these two foundations. Um, and so, yeah, so rips and recipes, we're going to get started. 
you're going to put us to work, we're going to play songs, we're going to talk about life and everything else. So, you what sure are, you're ready to work? Yeah. What's that? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm what are you chopping up? garlic That's over right. here? Yeah, so I'm going to start with the collard greens because I always start with whatever's going to take the longest. You want to cook them down? My mother used to cook collard greens down like, seemed like for hours. How long does it take to get the collard greens to? Yeah, you know, it's it's sort of, um, I guess, that is kind of old school. My mom used to do that as well. Throw with an onion. Onion, a big sock. piece of... An old sock. <laughs> <laughs> a big piece of pork. There's an occasional yeah. smell of that. Maybe it tastes like, like oh that. Maybe it tastes... I don't know what your mama did, but my mama didn't do it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I, you know, now that I'm cooking in California, my food has become a little... California eyes. Oh, you got bougie on it. A little oh, <laughs> sensitive to the vegetarian and vegan Jason folks bougie. in my life. Yeah. So um, this is uh, vegetarian collard greens. Vegan, actually, if you want to call it that. Mm. So a uh, little no olive bacon. oil. No mm. bacon. Mm. Still is tasty. Okay. I did make some um, did you in, in, in the new year. Right? Yes. Okay, cool. In the new year with uh, a smoked turkey leg, and that was really good. Oh, yeah. But these are just really simple. And uh, just is some garlic. Is this something you serve at? Brown this Hill? is definitely something I serve at the restaurant. Um, you know, we try to change the vegetables up seasonally, but my customers kind of always want collard greens. They always mm -hmm. expect it. You know, it's a soul food restaurant. So, um, and I don't mind if I can get good fresh ones in like I found today. Let's talk yeah. about the restaurant because I think it's important for people to know, for those of you that have heard that Brown Sugar Kitchen closed, it did because she's on 2.0 Bigger and Better, where she is opening an even grander restaurant in Oakland, um, and we can dive into that, along with this awesome new kind of serve and go at the Ferry Building. So why don't you yes. talk about what's to come? Yeah, you know, the, the restaurant that I'm building right now in Oakland, like, this was the dream. This is what I always wanted to do. I wanted, um, because I know the, the economics of a restaurant um, are pretty particular, and you want at least mm -hmm. 80 seats, a full bar if you can have it. The margins are really small. And when I was looking 11, 12 years ago, I couldn't find a spot that that was the, that was the right size. So now I have it. It's grander. It's uh, reflecting you know, my years of experience and taste. I had a great time working with an interior designer, picking out the colors. We have a great stereo system, Meyer Sound, so it's going to be a game changer. We have these high ceilings, but you'll be able to hear the person next to you talking because they have this uh, noise cancellation system and all these acoustical materials. Mm -hmm. I have a local artist that I commissioned who actually is making this quilted tapestry out of coffee filters. Oh. So wait until you see that. Yeah, that's Very really cool. And he's doing some stenciling in our bathrooms. And uh, I'm bringing some art from my old restaurant, just a little something old, something new. The menu will be roughly the same for breakfast and lunch. And then I get to add dinner, which mm. I haven't cooked in a long time. But I have a big repertoire. I'm very excited about that. Like this. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, just let me put the heat up a little bit more. How do you do this, uh, yep. Katie? Yeah, just increase. Ah, okay. Yeah. This is, um, for those of you who have not <laughs> been here, you know, everything that you see is brought to life with all of our sponsors. So Monogram is, is a generous sponsor of ours with our appliances, and this induction cooktop is like, <laughs> it's like the future. So she's like, how do you like it? But we for, are, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm used to cooking with fire, but I got this. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's all good. So we have, what's on the menu? Let's talk so about So on the menu, I have my uh, simply sauteed collard greens. So collard greens with olive oil, garlic, then I add a little um, hot pepper sauce, and really that's all it needs. Just cook them down. They're not cooked you know, for hours and hours, so they do have a little bit of bite. No but, dirty sauce. But they're good, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're really okay. good. People have told me that they're good. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I'm making vegetarian dirty rice. And um, I love this dish because it's sort of what I can do with rice if I've made it and for my gumbo, and the next day, you know, there's no waste. Right. I don't like wasting food, so. Doing that, and then blackened catfish mm. with pickled vegetables. So, and I know that somebody's going to ask, where can I find these recipes? Because let me do a little plug right there now. There you go. Thank you. Brown Sugar Kitchen can be found for $29.95 <laughs> on Amazon.com. This is an amazing book. All of, This is just brings Tanya's like inspiration to life. Thanks. And so you can find some of these in there. And we'll also post these on our show um, under the forum on Feast. Feastofboard.com. So we'll have that conversation where 
people can actually sticky stick garlic. these to life in their own kitchen. Oh, I love that. Sticky garlic. Doesn't yeah. smell good, though? Oh, yeah. Okay, now the collard greens, which have been washed. So there's a little water in them, which is kind of good because it's going to steam a little bit and help cook it down. Then I'll add a little more water as well. I know. You can all and smell it, but for those not here, it's like, oh, it's You don't have smell vision yet? No. You I have know. everything else. technology we have not figured out yet. <laughs> you have everything I know, else. I know, I know. A little bit of uh, salt. Mm. Oh. <laughs> that smell okay? Oh, God. Just garlic. I mean, garlic and onions, and then that's all you need, right? I like to sort of sear the leaves and then I'll add a little bit more water and let it cook down. Was there an aha moment for you with cooking? That yeah. Led to, you know what, I'm going to do this and, <laughs> you know, bring it to the world. Yeah, the world that's, or... that's a really good question. Um, well, you know, I grew up with parents who cooked. Both of them. Both of them did. My dad would usually do the breakfast on the weekends and a little bit of grilling. Um, and, but he also taught me how to make my uh, first cake from scratch. Hmm. My mom would do very traditional Louisiana food, gumbo. Um, she also did um, you know, fried oysters, things like that. And they also founded a gourmet cooking club when I was little. So they cooked, um, there was three, couple, three black couples and three white couples. This was in the 70s. So it's pretty impressive that they, yeah. yeah, you know, now that I look back at it, but I just, that was all I knew. And they cook soup to nuts cuisines from around the world, like the usual suspects of Italian, French, German, Italian, but they did a Alsatian Rhine dinner once. And I'm like, where did they find these recipes? <laughs> it was all time life, I think. Um, and they did a, a Polynesian luau, they did a, a Seder once, and, oh, and wow. all these recipes ended up in my mom's recipe, uh, her repertoire. So you know, I went to college and I'm like, oh, we had chicken cacciatore and matzo ball soup, and my mm. friends were just like mac and cheese and hot dogs. You're speaking so my language. <laughs> so I started cooking for my friends and entertaining, and I just, I really like feeding people even more than cooking, like just really making sure people feel comfortable, and um, it was just instant gratification, too. And then I started working in restaurants and learned a lot from uh, the people that I was working for. And yeah, it just kind of went on from that. I decided I wanted to own a restaurant probably in my mid 20s. And, you know, it took me a while to get there, but. Um, mm -hmm. Two years later, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Martin. <laughs> yes. You're right, you're right. Dreams can happen. <laughs> Stick so to it. For those of you watching, we already have a bunch of people asking questions. I'm going to be monitoring this from our handy dandy little Microsoft Hub here. Um, and somebody asked, what, what was your aha moment? Because you just asked her that. What was your, okay, this is a multi, all of these people in this room are multi-talented, but this gentleman not only plays guitar and sings, he's a producer and he also acts. And so, yeah, what was your like aha entertainer moment? Aha entertainer moment, that's not. He's like, I wanted to be a chef, but I wasn't <laughs> good. <laughs> I wanted to be a BMX motorcycle cross bicycle rider. But anyway, with regards to music, I could hear at a very young age, meaning there was uh, a brilliant musical director at my church, Bell Chapel CME Church in San Francisco. And this cat's name was Jimmy. And Jimmy was cold on the piano. He could sing all the notes. <laughs> and if you didn't give him what, you, what he wanted, he was going to get on you right then. So I had an ear for it. And my sister could sing. And my father could sing. Right? So it was always around the house. And I didn't want Jimmy to get on me. So I started to you know, um, complete the assignments singing-wise as a, as a young guy just to kind of like get away from being in trouble. I could do it, so I did it. But I could do it so well, I started to rewrite the melodies because I got bored with them fast. So as opposed to, swing low, sweet chair, right? I'm, I'm in church like, and he just like, swing low, <laughs> sweet chair. And my mother looked at me like, you know, what? why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and what did you just do? You know, we might need to go record. So it, it let me know that I had something, right? And then I didn't necessarily want to. New Edition had already been out. Michael Jackson was already out. So all of those parts were taken. 
I couldn't really <laughs> be in those groups, and I had to figure out what my sound was going to be. And that put me into like a, a I don't know moment because my voice changed. It went from being all high to <laughs> this old very white kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm like, well, who wants to hear that? You know, in my mind, I'm like, who wants to hear that? And just not knowing. You know, sometimes you just don't know. But I started to develop the, the craft of songwriting. Prince helped me out, Stevie Wonder, yeah. mm. uh, the, the Police, uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Albert King, songwriters, people that were going to yeah. take the time, Bob Dylan, to, to craft something that was going to be classic. That was more impactful to me than whatever the current thing was. And I picked up the guitar, but I didn't pick up the guitar until I was like 20-something. And two years later. <laughs> and two years later. Yeah, two years later. <laughs> well done. In two well years, done. I tell you. Wow. you know. But it's more, it's, more about, it's more about healing. It's more about helping and, in, yeah. and, and providing information. And I also help to heal myself through the music. Oh, yeah. It's like uh, cooking. I mean, it's I, therapeutic. I drink wine and cook because yeah. it's therapeutic, but I yeah. love doing it. You know, it's like it's that, that just like you're in that yeah. zone. Take us in a little, a little tune while she stills them. We're going to move on to the next dish, actually, the um, dirty rice. He's, he's going gonna, he's gonna to play a little music yeah, to make it, rice. you know. This is the Nice and Class 30 song. Actually doing a big release on Valentine's Day. Anybody in the Bay Area? Anybody yeah. like yep. Sade? Classic song yeah. music, yeah. love song. Yeah. We're gonna do a tribute to Sade, February 14th at the Red Bay Coffee House Roastery. It's a warehouse in uh, the Fruitville area of Oakland, California. And I'm also gonna debut 
my new love song entitled, I Want You Now. Mm. Hey, where's that? Where's your Wacky? Wacky, Wacky, where's my that? <laughs> You know, it's, uh, it's already some cooking going on up in here. They're going to turn it into a bed and breakfast up in here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we're going to dive into Tanya. But again, for those of you listening, please make your donation. This is going to two foundations that are close, near and dear to these people's hearts. And, of course, ours, because part of our mission is to keep it forward and pay it forward and give back. So. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. This smell is uh, so good over here. Yeah. yeah. You like it? I love it. Great. Are those are those bamboo uh, what do you call it? Utensils that you're working with? What we got going are on? Are you doing plugs for me now? This is genius. <laughs> yes, I don't even have to get paid to do this anymore. I'm trying to say, is that an analog wooden go. spoon that you're using? Right. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to have one set to the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the whole set like that. Oh, that's great. I didn't ask him to say that. Um, yes, it is, Martin. Okay. Yes, it's a beautiful. Oh, it works really well. well. Yeah. It works very well. Good. Actually, Proceed. I have a couple of these pots at home. They're great. Mm -hmm. They clean really. Yes. 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 That's key. I should, I should well, I, again, toss me any. I'm, I'm yes. just drinking and asking questions, which I'm totally okay with. But if you want to toss any veggies over here, you know, I I'm going to continue asking. Right now. And somebody asked, "Will she be cooking next Sunday?" Where? Uh, where? <laughs> yes, she's always cooking, but not here. You have to be here to experience it, which I hope that you'll look at our event calendar and see. I'll be back um, at some point. Right? And somebody said, lots of hot sauce, chef. Please, <laughs> douse it up. Yeah. Whoever that is, is yeah. tell them I said right on time. I'm looking right, at the yeah. <laughs> But I know we're going to get on some of this. Oh, yeah. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, your experience with, um, let's see, we have... Your Stanford, remind me, you have a big initiative and cruise or, or big event coming up. Yes. yes. Um, you have a trip coming up that you were Tanzania. Kind of, okay. Ooh, Tanzania in 2020, to March of 2020. Amen. Yes, going on a culinary safari Woo. with uh, a very seasoned um, culinary uh, tour um, company. But I'll be sort of leading it and cooking with some of the locals at the camps that we go to. So fun. So that'll be really nice. Yeah. I'm um, looking forward to that. But there's a lot going on before that. Yeah. First of all, I'm Okay, yeah. She has two restaurants <laughs> opening next month in February, right. so she's not busy at all. Um, and uh, I do have a continuous pop-up at Stanford University called Red Skillet Kitchen. And that's on campus. So, you know, if you're not a student or a faculty, sorry, you can't go, but it's there. <laughs> Um, and I have a collaboration with Whole Foods, Whole Foods in Oakland I told you about. Yeah. I designed a menu for their tap room. That's been really fun. What else do I have going? Oh, we just got a deal at Oakland Airport. There'll be a brown shirt kitchen in the Oakland Airport. Yeah. 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 So that was the little snippet. Yeah, that oh. was it. Yeah, oh. in the fall of 2019. See, I had little snippets of info yeah. that I kind of like have a feed to her. Tell me about exactly. it. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. It's exciting. And so cool. the A's just asked us to do a pop up container for uh, this next season and then maybe eventually they'll build us the a little thing. So, no sorry i don't care about that <laughs> sorry i'm a giants fan no i do i care about you but a's i support it but giants fan I, hey, I'm, I'm based, I'm based you, in oakland yeah we'll move on I from support that my team. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, I'm uh you know representing the raiders at yes the Taste NFL can we just Bowl, all yeah. pray for the chiefs right now yes. that you are know. playing because my husband is a chiefs fan <laughs> she is going to the super bowl to do a whole chef cooking segment there yeah that would so be fun so i am and i'm sorry raiders you didn't make it but it's chiefs okay. i hope that you feel okay. free Right now, so it's going on. And you, and you're in my home. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I can carry the. How many volunteers do yeah. I have? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You put the zucchini, zucchini started with? Zucchini first, then, right. then I put red and green bell peppers, right. green onions, and garlic last because I don't want the garlic to burn. Mm -hmm. Kind of a succotash-ish. So, you know, I've heard yeah, it somewhere around my house, but my wife swears she don't know how to <laughs> <laughs> That's the base. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of flavor right there. Uh, right. And next, I'm going to season it with some of this great feast. Uh, salt with yeah, herbs yeah. and herbs. I better, you know, I better try this. You know, and you know what? Yeah. My uh, Creole spice already has Ooh. herbs and herbs in it. Ooh. So it's it goes with the uh, 
the dish. Mm. I'm not even oh, close man. to finish, Kate. I know, but it's, but, <laughs> come on, man. I'm just enjoying your... I know. Now I'm putting the Creole spice, which is uh, cayenne pepper, paprika, herb of Provence, toasted cumin, a little black so pepper. Good. It's so good. Did you make this? Yeah, I make my own spice blend. Ooh, I understand. I'll take this spice. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need no more of this. Take no more of this. I'll help you out. He's going to write a song about spice mm -hmm. blends. Uh, Are you suggesting uh, I should uh, have right my own? Spice blends. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> spicy blends. Oh, spicy blends. <laughs> and now the rice. This is uh, rice that I cooked this morning, so it's chill. You want your rice kind of cool oh. down. Mm. So you don't want to actually steam rice and then, and then do toss it. it right in. No, the it's nice because it's sort of like the uh, the grains are a little bit uh, looser once it kind of dries. You know, it's not sticky. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I'm adding some tamari. How about the I rarely like cook with. Soy sauce anymore. I usually do tamari. There's a little so less sodium are, in that too. Yeah, right. and so many people are gluten free. Mm -hmm. uh, Worcestershire sauce. Again, these recipes will be available on our platform, feastofford.com. So, as my grandfather used to call it, what's this here sauce? <laughs> what's this here <laughs> sauce? My uncle called it Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. <laughs> And then is that all going to evaporate? You're just gonna yeah, it it's gonna soak in? it's gonna absorb. I'm gonna make sure every grain of rice is covered, mm -hmm. and then we'll wilt. Um, actually, I'm gonna toss these tomatoes in there. Just let them cook down so they don't lose all of their texture. And then I'll toss in some um, spinach at the end. Nice, just to wilt it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just to wilt it. It's and really we both, simple. you know, it's nice. We both work with Whole Foods. They have wonderful products. Um, yeah. I don't think they ever fail us, so it looks good. Looks fantastic. We're spoiled out here in California, oh, too. Yeah. Have great access to great product. Is there a history behind dirty rice? Well, this is, you know, traditional dirty rice. It's uh, made with sausage and chicken livers. Uh -huh. I think some, you know, sort of the lower end cuts of meat, and then the rice would sort of have that dirty color to it. And I wanted to do a vegetarian version, but mm -hmm. um, Louis, you know, very typical Louisiana side dish, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So yeah. cooking with you, you know, growing up. I mean, my, my, my parents are from Texas, and oh, my grand Texas Galveston, okay. my mom's oh. from Galveston, okay. and my father's from Marshall. Okay. My grandmother Mabel used to cook and tend to folks' house. That was her, she was domestic, you know, okay. that, that was her, her uh, role in life during that period. And um, she shared that information with my mother and my mother was the eldest of about five kids. So while my grandmother would be at work, my mother would have to take care of the siblings until she went off to college. But she imparted that information with her as to how to, how to take care of a home. Yep. And uh, if you didn't know how to prepare a dish the way somebody wanted mm -hmm. to, you learned fast. And so my mother cooked around the house all the time. My father, he was used to his mother's cooking. And I think my mother passed the test. But mm -hmm. she also <laughs> learned fast because she had never experienced hot water cornbread. But my grandmother, Ruby, used to make hot water cornbread. So she asked Okay, her, I don't know anything about I I think this needs to be our next installment of Riffs and Recipes. Hey. I don't know about hot water cornbread. Well, you know, soul food has an interesting legacy. And in the, the uh, derivation, is that the word? The history yep. of words? Yeah, exactly. Know, what, how do you apply well, that to food? Yeah, I mean, the, the cool thing about this cuisine is that it's, you know, um, it's different depending on what part of the country you're in. Mm -hmm. But soul food follows wherever there's an African-American population. But soul food in Texas has a lot of the Texans, uh, Texas influences, like the German settlers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of sausages, links, uh, you know, the sausage links. And in Louisiana, it has a lot more French and English influence. So they're all can be different no matter where it is. And then they also might be informed by whatever it, whatever grows naturally in the area. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I heard a story about what are they called? Hush puppies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. That when the um, slaves were running away from the plantation, they would be armed with these balls of cornbread or whatnot <laughs> in order to quiet the dogs. That would be oh. Ooh. I can't tell you 
that it's the truth. With that, but Boy, wow. that's yeah. Just, yeah. Right. yeah. I think it's important if yeah. it's true because. I wouldn't want to go to Popeye's and order some hush puppies <laughs> and just not know that it's Right, no, for you know, sure. Yeah. So you didn't get it from me, but it's something worth wow. researching because there could be something to it. You know, Think about that. That's, no, it's that, an inextricable attachment between black and white in America, and it's not just black and white. But exactly. That, that whole thing, Food the is the common there, denominator. It, it hasn't right. been all the way hammered out. Yet, you know? <clears throat> mm-hmm. yeah, Food is, you yeah. Know. I mean, I, Jacques has always said that there there is no race when it comes to cooking. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, or eating. Are, or, or eating. eating. Or eating. We are, we are one. <laughs> yeah. Or yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, that we're, we're one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can and and more? we'll get more into that, talk about tomorrow as a holiday in a minute. But um, yeah. Dish you, number two. Uh, dish the, yeah. So that's it. That's I mean that that's, that's fair. It. So you still got that going. That's gonna I be. Still, yeah, I'm just gonna let that cook again, down. Again, no dirty socks, and really it's not taking an hour and a half. Exactly. Like his really grandma's. tender. <laughs> okay. Very really right. tender. If it wasn't a sock, it could have been a nylon. Nylon. They used to always make those kind of jokes, right? Oh, Can somebody put their drink big a little? I'm the only. Right. I know yeah. you're both busy, but I'm the only one drinking. So finish oh, we don't that. Make, make you and feel I'm bad. You a little, okay. uh, I'm gonna start yeah. freestyling these songs. If I That's can. okay. You know, you already <laughs> talked about somebody lost that wine glass. So let's we do something else. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a. All right. Why don't you take us to another tune? While yeah, I want to start fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn into a new world. Watch 
Not yet. No, okay. So I'm like, <laughs> that was emotional for me. That was beautiful. That was absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you for yeah, making, beautiful. trying to make me cry. No, no, no. <laughs> you should, you know. That was it gorgeous. happens though, you know. Someone's uh, turning 21 every yeah. day. Oh, sure. love it. All right, so I'm going to have some more questions in a minute, but you're, you're uh, Well, let's talk about what was your life like when you were 21? What were you doing? I was just about to finish school or let me see. No, I had uh, 21. <laughs> it's a little foggy. <coughs> <laughs> yes, I am from San Francisco. Um, I was just finishing school. I graduated in 92, college, Morehouse College at the time. Oh, okay. And at 21, I, I was, almost didn't finish school because I wanted to get into this music, you know? But I had made a promise to my mother and my grandmother and my auntie. They was just leaning on me like, you're going to finish, right? You're going to finish? I'm like, yeah, let me up. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. So I finished school. But I had also been uh, researching the guitar. I, hadn't, I didn't start playing the guitar until I, was, until I finished school, really. So I didn't want to go off to law school. I didn't want to go get a master's degree at that time. I wanted to dive into creativity. And that meant kind of being, you know, irresponsible to it, <laughs> not really working anywhere. I tried to get a job. I got fired from my first and only job. <laughs> first and only, oh, we need to I mean, at, this job? At, at the age of 21. Okay. After getting out of school, I, I got hired and it was great, and then I got fired, and it was really good. Because I, I wasn't supposed to be working there anyway. I needed to go into, no. I needed to go inside and figure out what it is I wanted to present to the world artistically. And it turned out to be soul music. It was always there, but until I picked up the guitar, I didn't understand what Sting was doing. I didn't understand what Prince was doing. The first song I learned to play. The Cross, a, a Prince song, but it's two chords. And I was like, if he can write a song with two chords. <laughs> You better believe I'm gonna write a song with two chords. And then I started writing, you know, and um, from there, I just started learning more about what I wanted to do with the craft and with the, with the gift, more or less. It started to come to me that I had something else to say that wasn't being said. So eventually, my partners and I that I went to school with and uh, other members of my extended family, we started a record label, Rebel Soul Records. And we started to put out the music that we felt would give people an, uh, an option to what maybe the mainstream thought was the only thing that we were interested in. Soul music, like the artist on my shirt, you might not be able to see him, but that's Gil Scott Hammond. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of my leaders, you know. Mm -hmm. He's the leaders of that true school. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily gonna just do and say things for the sake of trying to get paid, but saying things that were more necessary. So I had to figure out, did I wanna go into that path of the trend, or did I wanna create my own trend? You know, and I chose to just do me. But it's a hard, you know, it's a battle because them checks be coming, but you gotta, you gotta straighten up and tuck your shirt in and get them checks sometime. And we all have to do it. But I just chose not to. But you have to be yourself authentically, mm -hmm. otherwise. There's no value don't. in it, not for me. Yeah, live authentically. Same. 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 Agreed. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And if anyone wants to make a donation, I am at uh, full. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, yes, come on, Mom, this is about the kids. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the kids can get some, too. I'm going to make sure the kids get some. <laughs> but, yes, please make your donations online. Take Wings Foundation. Yeah, I want to actually, I mean, I think oh, a lot okay. of people know about No Kid Hungry, but we yeah. should talk about Chef Cycle and your contribution to that. Sure. And then um, Take Wings, which I was not familiar with when I asked you both about what charity you wanted to support. I, I wasn't familiar with the organization. I work with two charities right now, <clears throat> two organizations. Um, one is Urban Ed Academy there in San Francisco, and the other is Take Wings Foundation. They're based out of San Francisco. Terry Vaughn, uh, she's a, a famous actress. She was on the Steve Harvey Show and some other things. She's mm, from San okay. Francisco. And she started this organization to help young girls find purpose, to not be lost in 
sex trafficking trades, drug addiction, having problems in the house, <coughs> and you don't have resources that could get you education or information that could help you realize that you could create prospects in your own life if someone just showed you how right. to work a kitchen, right. how to work an instrument, how to work a camera. Right. So Take Wings Foundation does that for young women, and they have a, a very high success rate of getting young girls from the hood into college to graduation. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Love and that, that's not easy work. Oh, no. It's very necessary work. <clears throat> yeah. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many people know about No Kid Hungry, but Chef Cycle, which is an, an ongoing effort, collaboration with it, maybe you can talk Another about fundraiser. Um, <clears throat> oh, God, now the pressure's on. <laughs> so this ride is 300 miles in three days, and a um, bunch of chefs, we get on our bicycles. Bicycle what? ride. Bicycle ride. Chef Cycle. Yeah. It's called Chef Cycle, and we raise money for every mile we ride, and um, it all goes to No Kid Hungry. I mean, I just, it's really um, important to me to feed people who, you know, especially those vulnerable populations that it's hard to imagine a kid not having food, you know, mm -hmm. breakfast or lunch and then having to go to school. So um, they work closely with um, principals of elementary schools and middle schools and I visited some of those schools and they get the breakfasts and lunches in the schools and it's really, um, it's great work. That's so amazing. anything I can do. And this will be fun, even though it doesn't sound fun, yeah. but I'll be with a bunch of colleagues yeah. and I'm looking forward to it. Very cool. And that's in yeah. May, isn't it? Every in year? May yeah. and then in June it's in Charlottesville, okay. which is where I went to college. So cool. hopefully I'll get there, back there one day too. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Two very notable causes. Yeah. All right, last dish. Yeah, got to get started yeah. for some blackened catfish. <coughs> Always fish with oil. the olive oil. Always. This is um, so this is actually the grapeseed grape oil. oil. For, we use a lot of grapeseed oil here. Yeah. Hotter temperature, so yep. for searing. Could we talk a little bit about oil and temperature and like what oils are, are, are best? Are you trying to get a cookie list? I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am really. I'm trying to, yes, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to elevate <coughs> some ears in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> So that when I get home, it's like, no, you heard what she said about that great seed oil. <laughs> yeah, that, that does have the highest temperature. We yeah. use that mostly in the kitchen. but And neutral, too, neutral yep. flavor. Um, mm. Sometimes at work, we have an olive oil blend. You know, the olive oil, you kind of want to impart that flavor to the greens. doesn't have a lot of other, there's not a lot more going on that dish. Mm -hmm. But with this spice, mm -hmm. I don't want to take away from it, so I'm just going to use a neutral oil. Um, Olive would be too 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 rich in flavor. Yeah, and also um, you know just not for this high temperature cooking. You don't want olive oil because you don't need all that. But like extra virgin olive oil, really you don't want to heat that at all. Use that for salad dressings okay. or just finishing something. Mm -hmm. um, I just bought some avocado oil because that's oh. getting really popular. Yeah. To try that out too. So I'm still learning, which is what I love about what I do is it's there's always something to learn. Right. Um, so this is a blackening spice, which a little different from the Creole spice. It has oregano and um, some thyme in it, and then the cayenne and paprika and onion powder and garlic powder. Are you drying the fish completely, absorbing the liquid with, with um, paper you know, towels? Or? Yeah, you know, when I took them out of the refrigerator, because I don't want, they're pretty dry, I don't want that extra liquid there. Nice hot pan with a good sear. Then I'm going to season the other side. A little salt. This is one of my favorites. Oh, well, I like both of these spice mixtures. A little bit goes a long way. Thank you. And uh, usually you have to finish this in the oven to cook it all the way through. But I want to get a nice sear here, and then I'll flip it over and put it in the oven. Okay. Black it. Chicken and salt that you might go with. Um, I like sea salt or kosher salt, mm -hmm. both of those. Not iodized salt, for sure. <laughs> of that. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. Once again, the smell. Mm -hmm. You like the smell? Mm-hmm. I know. We just need to bottle it up. <laughs> bottle it and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the, you know, I... I trained formerly in France. I learned all the classic sauces and techniques, and I worked in some high-end restaurants on the East Coast. But I love just cooking really simple food, and all the recipes in my book are very accessible. Um, I was thinking the other day about, like, I'm sure somebody's already done it, writing a recipe book that's every 
five ingredients is really all you need. You know, you just sure. need to know how to balance the flavors. Right. So have that color on there. It's such a, a nice, it's this texture of catfish too. Oh. I love catfish. It's so tender. And this is sustainable farm raised. Did I finish it in the right. oven? Yeah. So it doesn't burn. You know, it's off that heat there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> That's a coffer, though, that one. Woo! Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. that spice. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you have your own spice bloom line? Uh, no, but I think I should, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> we should talk. I'm working talk. on it. We should uh, talk. Uh, you know, we are part of this business. Mm -hmm. We all saw it. Everybody. Entrepreneurs here. Entrepreneurs yes, here. yes. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You know, some things. Ooh, that got me a little bit, too. I know. That's why I gave you a heads up. Got me. I need a drink after. Yeah. <laughs> um. All in due time, but... um. Yeah, there's a lot on the horizon. Um, maybe even a cookware line, oh, you know? Mm -hmm. Now we're talking. Right? right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, uh, I represent uh, Tony <laughs> <laughs> I need a manager. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, you could be each other's manager. Uh, talk to Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. Thing <laughs> I will have a discussion. Exactly. Um, so we decided to have uh, this Rips and Recipes celebration on, on a day that is prior to a very important day tomorrow that I think we should discuss. Martin Luther King. Day. Um, and so. Yeah, someone has the right name. Yeah, I know, I know. I know, I mentioned that. I was like, Martin Luther McCoy's coming. They're like, Martin Luther McCoy. No, but it is a very, you know, I'm not, I'm not, we will not discuss politics tonight, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, tomorrow is a very, very important day. And, and, you know, in your culture, not only in our American culture, it's, it's historical and it's something that should be celebrated and discussed and appreciated. I agree. We're going to celebrate, discuss, dissect, and appreciate the day tomorrow night in Oakland, California, at a place called Spirit House, H-A-U-S, Spirit House. It's a gallery. It's a place for people to express, whether it be poetry, visual art, music. We have three bands coming to play. Stone Mecca. Stone Mecca is the, uh, the resident music director for the RZA, the Wu-Tang Clan, mm -hmm. if anyone's familiar with Wu-Tang. And uh, the Bay Area's own Court of Blood technique. And they hail from uh, the South Bay. And myself. Martin Luther McCoy. We're going to have a, a rather monster funk rock jam <laughs> in tribute to the, uh, you know, the founding fathers of the, the Civil what Rights Club. What time Club. is that? It starts at 8 o'clock. Okay. Spirit House? Spirit House Gallery. Okay. Spirit you can House find Gallery. it on Instagram, Spirit H-A-U-S Gallery, and you can you know, see what's going on. <laughs> it's also on Facebook and all those types of things. But um, okay. yeah, my, as, as the story has been told, as it was told to me by my mother, <clears throat> my father chose between Malcolm and Martin. And let me tell you, it's been quite an um, interesting set of circumstances to be named <laughs> after yeah. the Reverend Dr. King. <laughs> you know, but hey, to each his reach, and if I don't cop, it ain't mine to have. But I have this name, and I do the best that I can with it. It is my birth name, Martin Luther McCoy. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're looking forward to, to just playing some music. And, you know, <clears throat> the spirit of those times informs my process as well. Here's an example, <clears throat> if I can get it right. I've been working all day Without you, life is hard I struggle to find a way With all we lost, one thing can make it right I dream at night you need to come back to me I'm trying to get a hit Like a Dallas County lead I'm sorry for what was said But sacrifices bind us when we leave A spirit that runs so deep Girl, you need to come back to me Like 
like South Alabama, Alabama. The song is entitled Selma, and it's about the spirit of Selma, mm -hmm. being more analogous to a woman. And the times that we're living in right now, needing that woman's spirit to come back to us mm -hmm. because we are so disjointed and not connected and we're so easily distracted and wanting to get into these frays and this, 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 this tension and static. Because of those moments that they went through, we were able to organize yep. collectively. And we need some of that energy. So I'll take, I'll just look at life and what's going on on CNN and the, mm -hmm. the, the, the politics and all of this stuff and it'll just inform the chords and the words and then it'll come out in the song. So well, spirit. It's time for yeah, it's time. more feminine energy in our world. <laughs> Hello? In general. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The future here, is not ready. feminine. It is now. <laughs> it's not just the future. It's now. That's we need, right. The now is feminine. We need the balance. Yes. The now do. is. Hey, that's a good shirt, Tanya. You should, the now is the feminine. The now is feminine. <laughs> okay. I like it. I'm, uh, you know, talk to some nice people about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you're our manager now. Here we so go. you should know a little bit. Mm -hmm. Feast it forward. <laughs> Fresh squeeze of lemon as it comes out. Beautiful. Now I'm going to get everything plated. So we have the uh, second. I still want to finish this. And as a reminder for those of you watching, even just a dollar if you'd like to donate, this is supporting two amazing foundations. So Take Wings and Chef's Table for No Kid Hungry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you can do it after the fact, too. It's not like you, if, for those of you watching the, the games and want to watch this after, it's not like this has to be immediate. We, we will have this live living on our site. Oh, my oh, yes. goodness. I love this fish. Hello. Let's see. I know what I could do. How many people am I cooking for, Katie? Ooh. Well, we're, we're, we're just, we're plating this up. Okay. For, for us at the moment, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it smells so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> something yeah. just happened downstairs. <laughs> Somebody just scored a touchdown and got tackled. Something, line. yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, uh, your tongs, I think, in that. Yes. There's a... Ooh, that's perfect. That's, I knew get me in a good way. See, I told you. So, oh, the greens. They decided to join us after yeah, that's all. That's right. <laughs> and so you want them, you want a little bite to them, too. I like Christmas, mine. You don't want I them like mine, yeah, not totally broken down. <coughs> there are a lot of, but, um. The soul food need to go through a revolution. All the life out of them, but yeah, keep a know, little bite to it. Exactly, right? it, it is. Not in it and put a little more vegan. I was gonna say, like right. you didn't do any like ham hocks or any bacon or any like you. you no, and it's not like I don't like that stuff, but you know we have to kind of evolve a little taste. Yes, exactly. And I'm not, I'm not the only one doing. it. There's definitely a um, Look. a bunch of other chefs who are doing it of African American descent. Yes, and it's great. It's really exciting bringing uh, techniques from Europe to the soul food cooking, and everybody's got their own style, and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an exciting time. There's the James Beard Awards this year mm -hmm. had so many African American chef winners. Um, June Baby Restaurant in Seattle. <coughs> um, I need more soul food in my life. Because <laughs> I am hacking away. Compton's <laughs> rest, uh, restaurant. Uh, oh, we just had from her here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In uh, New Orleans. Now, what did I do with those tongs that I just had? Where, where'd they go? Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I'm not the only blind Hi. one. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to say that. Thank close. you. Okay. <clears throat> and this is uh, pickled vegetable garnish. Okra, peppers, and onions. Yum. So pretty. I mean... Yes. I know, right? Well, my only question is... What are y'all going to have? Well, well we've got, we got horse. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. 
Because once I get my plate, it ain't gonna be too much left for y'all. I'm just saying. Now, what I'm gonna do with the pickling liquid is melt it with a little butter. Oh, give it a little, little sauce. Yeah. 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 Sauce. 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 Sauce.
So I'll grab my guitar <coughs> and get lost in my world. Where is this place to which I've cast my pearl? Help me rescue the love of a boy and his girl. Chasing her music, a fool and his music. I'm chasing a music dream. Martin Luther McCoy, Shantanya Harlan. Cheers to feasting it forward. Be kind to each other. We're all one. Let's celebrate tomorrow. Let's celebrate tonight. Let's do Cheers. it. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.